Let's do one more. Last. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Right. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first speaker, which is Daniel Polenchik. And uh, he has been one of the instructors at Learn Kubernetes. He actually spoke at one of our previous DevOps meetup. Uh, and we're very interested to hear him speak about architecting Kubernetes clusters for high traffic websites. Uh, I think you'll find his talk very interesting. He's going to talk about Kubernetes containers from small to large enterprises. And he has been a prolific speaker. And uh, I'll let him continue. Daniel, the stage is yours, and I'll stop sharing. OK. OK, thank you very much um, for, the, for the excellent introduction. Um, so, so yeah, my name is uh, Dan, so I'll just share my screen, so let me see. Okay. Hopefully you can see my screen now. Oops. Okay, I think this should be enough. Can you all see my screen? Yeah, excellent, excellent. So thank you very much for the introduction. I'm very glad to be here for, uh, for this meetup. So things are slowly recovering. So who, who am I? So I'm gonna be quick on, on who am I and, and what do I do because we've got a lot of ground to cover. I've got so many demos and hopefully they will, they will stay within, within half an hour. Um, so my name is Daniele. Uh, people call me Daniele, Daniele, Dan. And, and recently also there is a joke, they call me D5E. Um, uh, Chris, if you're listening, that's that's for you, uh, which is a joke related to to, to Kubernetes. Um, so what do I do? Um, mostly, I, I teach Kubernetes. Um, I was lucky enough to speak at KubeCon, uh, the biggest Kubernetes conference, um, twice, and I'm also a Kubernetes certified um, administrator. Um, I was actually one of the first 500 that received the certification. Um, so yeah, I spent I spent a lot of my time on on studying and teaching Kubernetes. And um, I work for a company called uh, Lair Kubernetes, uh, which is basically just a company that does teaching. <laughs> that's, that's all it is. But, but today, um, today, I'm not here to talk about um, myself. I'm here to talk about Kubernetes and scaling applications and ingress controllers on, on Kubernetes. But there was a life, and we used to deploy applications even before Kubernetes, and maybe you do, um, uh, right now, right? Maybe maybe you, you're not using Kubernetes. So what do we do when and when we have websites and we want to deploy those websites, um, you know, anywhere into into a virtual machines or in, into a VPS, you know, whatever whatever thing you have? Then I've got a, a red website in front of me. Then generally, what we want is this website to be deployed somewhere so people can access it, right? So they can visit the website and do whatever they want. And generally, when things get very um, Popular, let's say that you've got you've got more than um, more traffic than you expected. Then that's when things get a little bit more interesting. Uh, so what do we do? We scale, right? We create more copies of of the applications. Um, but what happens? How do we how do we actually route this traffic between these two applications? Well, generally, you know, the opinion is that um, we we just put a load balancer in front, right, and we distribute the traffic between one application and the other. But as the application grows, then, then the issue comes up again. If I've got one, not one, but two microservices or two applications, how do I actually route the traffic between those two, right? And in the past, you might have used something like um, sort of a, a reverse proxy or, or a component that works like a router, and it just routes the right traffic to the correct set of microservices. Now, this, this is basically what we used to do, or we still do, and that's you know, the usual way we build things. Uh, in Kubernetes, we, we like to be special, okay? So we have exactly the same thing, the same architecture that you're seeing on the screen. We just call everything with a different name. Instead of calling the, the internal load balancers, load balancers, we call them services. And instead of calling the external load balancer, external load balancer, then we call it an ingress. Okay, so that's basically <laughs> what, what we do. And in in this in this sort of uh, in this sort of diagram, then we also have other things in, that in Kubernetes we, we sort of call with different names, but we're already familiar with, such as the applications and that themselves. So usually those applications are packaged as containers, and and the application itself is called you know, is, and the containers itself are, are grouped into what we call a pod. So so basically, 
it's usually interchangeable when we speak about application, we say, oh, I'm deploying a pod. In this particular case, I've got two replicas of, of the red page and one pod for, uh, for the beige one. So that's basically you know, a very, very si simple architecture in, in, in Kubernetes. Now I want to focus, so this, this talk is more about networking and the flow of the traffic that comes from, uh, from, from the user and goes into, into the pods. So I think what I want to highlight is basically the services and the ingress. So let's have a look at these services, how they work. Um, so essentially these services are, are glorified load balancers. So the way it works is when you want to make a request, we don't actually give away the, the pods IP addresses. Instead, we, we prefer to give away um, load, uh, the IP address of, of the load balancer. I mean, that's standard practice everywhere. I would say if you want to scale a service, then generally we, we use a load balancer to distribute the traffic. And that works if you've got one single replica or multiple replicas. Now, Kubernetes has got <laughs> a fair amount of, of these services, um, that, these internal load balancers, and they all sort of extend each other and they have different properties and I'm not gonna go too much into it, but the idea is that you've got two sort of different flavors and they build on one on top of the other. But what's it re what is really, really important to, to, to understand is that these internal load balancer are actually um, not, not real load balancers. Um, they are a construct that looks like a load balancer, but in reality, what it is, is basically just a collection of IP addresses and ports. And all of these data, so when you say, I want to create a load balancer, then what Kubernetes does is looks at all of the pods, it looks at all of the IP addresses and ports, and then basically collects them together and stores them in the database. Um, and later on uses this data to actually decide how to route traffic. So it is really important to remember that all of these four types of services in reality, what they are, it's just a collection in the database of IP addresses and ports. So when you add a new pod, then a new record is created inside, inside the database. When one of these parties removed, when, when one of these applications is removed, then that entry is removed from the database as well. So, so that's, that's basically how, how these um, internal load balancer um, keep, keep the state of, um, of the cluster. Now, we talked about internal load balancer. What about, what about routing traffic inside the cluster? Now, you know, if we take a step back and we forget Kubernetes for a second, and you've got a collection of microservices, then generally what you want to do is you want to say all of the traffic to the account uh, slash account should go to the first two microservices, the last two microservices. And you know, if I hit checkout, go to the first one. Now this can be also done with domain names. For example, if you host several applications, you might want to route the traffic based on the domain name. Um, and if you've done that in the past, then generally the idea is that, okay, we need to ingest the traffic and redirect to somewhere. Um, and, and for that, you might have used something like a reverse proxy. So a component, an application that basically ingests all of the traffic and then has a list of rules. And every time the, the traffic is ingested, then this application will basically read the rules and, and decide where the traffic should be routed. Okay, so this is pre pretty standard. Um, even if you're not using containers, then you might, have, you might have used something like Nginx or Apache to basically route the traffic inside your infrastructure to the right location. Now, it turns out that this is exactly what we do in Kubernetes as well. So Kubernetes is not reinventing the wheel in this case. So where I showed you a black bar in, um, in the previous diagram, then this black bar, what it is in reality, is just basically another pod, so another application. This application, it is a little bit special um, because in Kubernetes, what they have done, instead of writing the rules, uh, like an nginx.conf, then they've abstracted those away. So you basically declare what the rules are in advance, and these rules are basically ingested. They look like this, so it's abstracted away from you, or you have just a generic definition. And then these rules are basically stored inside the database, uh, Kubernetes database, and they, they, they kept there. What happens next is basically this reverse proxy will read the rules and basically rec reconfigure these nginx.conf on the fly. And the way it does that is by looking at the service and say, oh, okay, you want to go to the service. So we know that services are just a collection of endpoint, a collection of IP addresses. So we'll just go and look at the database, see where these um, IP addresses are, and then I will start routing the traffic. 
So, so that's basically how it works. So we've got internal load balancers called, called services, which are basically just recording the database of IP addresses. And then we have this ingress controller, which is routing the traffic, real routing the traffic, and just borrows the, this list of IP addresses and ports from, from the database from, and from the services themselves. Um, so that's basically the flow of a very, very um, sort of quick summary on how we ingest traffic in, in Kubernetes and how we route that traffic to, to the right parts. Um, so what happens when, when we have a lot of traffic and, and we need to do something about it? Well, in, in this picture, we have a single, a single Nginx uh, um, pod. But as you can imagine, the more traffic you get, then there is going to be a lot of stress on this Nginx pod and it might, might start failing. Uh, so usually what we do is we just increment the number of replicas. And that basically means just scaling this pod um, and, and, and routing even more traffic. And that's basically what this, this talk is all about, is how do we, how do we actually measure um, the incoming traffic and, and how, when, when do we decide when to switch to three, five, or even more replicas? Um, in our cluster. So like I said, uh, we're going to do a fair amount of demo. Everything hopefully is going to, is going to be fine. Um, <laughs> this is a little bit risky, but I'm, I'm, it's a risk that I'm willing to take. Um, so what, what is the plan? So I've got a mini cluster locally, okay? Just to minimize disruptions on, on my side, I've got a, a mini cube cluster. And in this mini cube, mini cube cluster, we're going to deploy a very simple application. Um, this is called Pod Info. Uh, it's a project from, from Stefan. Um, from Flux, um, and it's basically just showing an image. And if you ask for um, an API, if you if you if you issue an API, um, a curl request is going to reply in JSON. So it's very convenient to test. So this is the first part. Then the second the second part, what we will do is we will install this ingress controller. So Kubernetes does not come with an ingress controller by default. So we will need to install it. And then third, well, we've got this too. We need to actually generate some traffic and see and see failing. So we will deploy something called Locust, which is basically just a load generator. So we will basically send quite a lot of traffic to the application and, and, and see what happens. Um, so this is what it looks like. So we just basically define how many users we want to simulate, and this is going to send all of these users uh, to the application. Uh, so lastly, um, so how do we know if the application is coping with the traffic? Well, we need some metrics. So for the metrics, we're going to install um, Prometheus, and, and we're going to use Prometheus to just scrape the metrics from, uh, from Nginx to observe how many, um, how many active connections. So this is the plan. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll go, we'll go just fine. Um, just before just before we break and, and I show you I show you the terminal, I think the goal for me in this in this session is to count the number of active connections on Nginx. So imagine that a traffic is going is flowing through your cluster. We're basically interested in in counting how many active connections, so how many connections are going through Nginx. So that's the metric that I'm going to uh, measure in in this demo. Okay, so we're going to see how Nginx is exposed way more metrics that we need. Or we're just going to focus on one. Okay, let's get started. Um, so what I have, um, can you see my? So I've got I've got a big screen. Um, can you see the terminal? Is it is it legible? Yes, it is. Okay, excellent. So what I have is a very basic cluster with Minikube. Oops, status p. Okay, which is which is running right, and I can do a kubectl get pods, and it says there is nothing. Okay, so this looks like an error, but in reality, it's just telling me that yeah, the test, the the cluster is empty. So the first thing we want to do is we want to deploy an application. Now, if this is your first time um, with with Kubernetes, then I'm sorry. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm not. <laughs> it's um. It's a little bit daunting at first, but um, but the idea is that in Kubernetes we define everything up front in something called YAML, so a configuration. And in this particular configuration, what I'm what I'm basically saying, I want to deploy an application and I want to create a, a load balancer, which we call service. And then the rest of the specification is just basically saying things such as 
the name, the container image, what kind of port is exposed and so on and so forth. So if you think this is a lot, it is a lot for everyone, even for me that I study Kubernetes day in and day out. So generally we don't remember everything by heart, but we sort of know where to look at. So if, you, if your question at this point is, do I need to remember all of this? The answer is no, not really. So once we have this definition, then I can submit it to the cluster with kubectl apply dash f and deployment. This will basically submit this um, definition and then Kubernetes will read it and then create the resources on, um, on my behalf. So if I, if I look at the resources that are being created, I can see that there is a pod running and then there is um, a service as well. So now I want to see the application running. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna create a, temporal, a temporary tunnel to the application. Like this. Let's go in a browser. Okay. So I can see, I can zoom in a little bit, and I can see that the application has been deployed. So all good so far. So we said that next we need to install um, an ingress controller. So the ingress controller actually comes in two parts. So one is the actual reverse proxy, which does the work. And the other one is the manifest where it basically we define how we want the traffic to be routed. So I'll show you the specification first and then we're gonna install the controller. So the specification is basically saying every time you see example.com as a domain name, then you should route all of this traffic to pod info. Okay, so that's basically, the generic definition. So notice how this definition is not nginx specific, but it's just generic. It's generic enough that we can swap nginx with, some, nginx with something else. So let's submit this. Okay. Now, this we submitted the specification, but there is no reverse proxy. So this will basically do nothing. To install a reverse proxy, so I'm just gonna copy the string. I'm gonna use something called Helm, which is basically just a glorified way to install a lot of these YAML files in one single shot. Um, so the command is, is not important, but I think what you should know is that this command basically helps me do a lot of heavy lifting in, in a single command instead of, instead of <laughs> several commands. Okay, I can check that. Um, has been deployed successfully. I can see it's here. Now, how do I know that it's actually running? Um, what we can do is we can connect again um, to the service and see if we can reach the application. So I'm gonna create a temporary tunnel again, port forward. Um, I'm gonna go 8080, actually 8081. This goes 80, yeah. Now, the, we said that every time we send a request, this request has to be to example.com, right? So if I go back to the specification, example.com is here. So let's try what happens when I do a curl to localhost 8081, nothing. But if I add the header, host example.com, I can see that the response is coming back. So I can verify that th this, this sort of integration works and all of the traffic is actually routed through this, this component called the ingress controller. Now, there is something else. Um, and that something else is um, this, this reverse proxy, this Nginx controller. Yes, it's routing my traffic, but it's also been configured to expose metrics. So let's see what kind of metrics. I'm just going to see, because I don't remember the report, I'm just going to quickly check. Uh, so I can see that there is a pod. I'm just going to inspect the definition and check where these uh, metrics are exposed. You can see what I've done is basically I retrieved this YAML definition from the cluster and I'm inspecting what port um, this is connected to. So again, I'm gonna create a temporary tunnel 
this time I'm going to use the pod's name, then 913903. Okay. So if I go, okay. So I'm, I mean, basically this endpoint school slash metrics is exposed by the Ingress um, Nginx controller. And it looks very daunting, but what it is is basically just a collection of metrics which are exposed um, by the Ingress controller. Uh, so if I refresh and I'm lucky, I might see the number of changes. I don't, <laughs> I, don't expect, <laughs> I don't expect it to be very, that lucky, but, um, but you get the idea. You get all of these metrics exposed. They are exposed, but who is actually looking uh, looking at them, uh, technically now no one. So what we can do next is we can install Prometheus. So Prometheus is basically going to collect all of these metrics and store them um, in in a database. So it's easier for us to actually query those query those metrics and and see you know what kind of things are are happening. So to install Prometheus again, I'm going to just use um, a Helm chart. So a Helm chart is basically just a collection of, of YAML definitions. And that basically helps me out with um, installing, in, installing more than, than a single YAML files in one go. Let's see if it's been installed. Okay, everything running, almost. <laughs> almost everything running. And I can see that we have, we have a service here. So I'm just going to create again um, a temporary tunnel to Prometheus, so we can actually look at the user interface. Eighty, eighty. Where do we go? Eighty. Okay. Okay. So this is basically. Probably so. It, it is a little bit dull, but we can easily easily change this and actually query the metrics that we see we see here in the in nginx. So I'm just going to copy the metric the metric that I'm interested in, which is this one. Okay, let's go five one minute. Okay, and then. Uh, I shouldn't be really doing this, but bear in mind with me. I, I generally we collect the metrics and we use another tool called Grafana to show the metrics. But being <laughs> to keep it simple, I'm just going to refresh the the page every second. Okay, so I don't need to install anything else in um, um, <laughs> in my cluster. Of course, we don't do this in uh, <laughs> in production. The only reason why I do, I've done this is because it's quick and easy for me. And, and you can see that what I'm doing here, I'm basically querying over time. So the average over time of the active connections that are going through the ingress. That's what I'm doing. So my, my hope is that when we start sending traffic, then we will see a spike here in, in the number of connections. Okay, to create, the, <laughs> so now oh, let me see if I, maybe we can just um, curl a couple of times. Um, curl localhost. And the ingress is 8081. Uh, we need also the header host example.com. Okay, so a couple of times. Let's see if there is uh, any change in. Oops. I don't know where it's gone. Any, we should be seeing overall. Okay, I don't see. Anyway, maybe we'll see, we'll see when we start generating a little bit more traffic. Maybe it's, it's not enough. So how do we generate this traffic? Then I'm going to use a tool called Locust. You can use any, you know, if you use JMeter in the past, that's good as well. Um, I'm just, I just like a visual tool, so I'm going to use this one. And what it is, is basically, let me just show you. Um, so again, it's a data definition in YAML, and it basically describes what kind of applications, um, what kind of application has to be deployed. In this particular case, it's just um, this this application called Locust, and and once once it's deployed, then we can just get um, interface like creating a temporary tunnel. Okay. 
84 maybe and goes to 80, 89. Okay, so this is basically our testing tool. So we can basically define how many users we want and the spawn rate. So I'm just going to say 20 and then the host. So I'm going to point in the ingress. And, and then, yeah, let's see what happens. The chart will basically, hopefully will work. Yeah, okay, it is working. Um, so what you see here, um, we are sending requests to the ingress and this is the number, the total requests per second. This is the response time. And this is the number of users. So the number of users will increase until we reach 2000. And what I will expect is that the, the requests will go up and this is the request per second. So it might actually drop in the future if we send too many requests, but my interest is, is in actually in this line. So my, what I expect is that the more traffic you have, the, the more the latency will actually increase as our application can, cannot cope with what's going on at the moment. You can see it's, it's already spiking now. Um, the, the latency is going up. So, so the application, it is struggling a bit. So what we can do now, since it's struggling a bit, oh, we can check Prometheus, by the way. You can see that the number of active connections for the Nginx, they actually match the number that we saw back there. So we are about a thousand active connections, which looks like about right. Um, so what we can do here is of course, we can cheat a bit and say, okay, we've got, if I list all of the, all of the things that I deployed in my cluster, then I can say, oh, I've got a single ingress. So maybe, maybe I can just increase the number for for that for that deployment let's do that let's see what happens okay so i'm going to change it to three save and see and seeing that there are three more there are two more pods being created so hopefully hopefully this this response time I will drop it start dropping now so maybe we'll drop even more uh, because now we've got more instances actually coping with the traffic so I think overall I mean I'm not, I'm not expecting this to go to to a very low number um, but at least I'm expecting that to decrease and that's about what what we see here anyway okay so so this is <laughs> so oh, actually yeah and while I'm I'm here let's do kubectl proxy yeah okay let's uh, let's also visualize what what is our cluster so we can we can discuss a couple of things um, for the next part so right now what we've deployed is basically the three ingress controllers and then we've got a bunch of other applications deployed in in our cluster so in this particular case i see that there is prometheus and prometheus comes with several pods and then i can also see the application itself and and maybe the scheduler and a few other components that are, that are key in Kubernetes. So, so what I want to do right now, let me get back to the slides. Um, so so we, we basically deployed, but the issue that we have is that, yeah, it's not great to manually change this number on the fly. Um, what we'd like to do instead is, is to have this ingress controller just auto scaling on, on demand. As in, you know, we look at the metrics, we have these metrics, we define some thresholds. And then once we see those thresholds, then, then we actually trigger the auto scaling. So how does this work? And, you know, how can we put those things together? So first of all, we have Nginx. Nginx comes with these uh, exporter. So these metrics we, are the metrics that we saw here. These are basically the exporters. So we have those metrics exposed and we can potentially consume them. And then we have Prometheus, which is basically like a glorified database of metrics, uh, which we can query anytime. And yes, we are using it now properly, but, um, but that's basically working, right? So we know that the metrics are there. So ideally we can find something that connects those two things and we can just scale this Nginx. The issue that I have is what is this thing? How do I actually find out how how do I actually connect those two things together? So it turns out that 
it's not a single thing. In Kubernetes, we've got three different sort of components that together, they actually do what you want them to do, which is scale things. So the first one is called horizontal pod autoscaler. And that's basically just a fancy name for saying, oh, I want to autoscale a group of pods. So a group of applications. And on top of that, this autoscaler um, is basically a component that lives inside a cluster and create these pods, but it creates these pods based on, on metrics. So we need a way to collect metrics and make them available to the cluster. In Kubernetes, it doesn't come by default with, with a way to collect metrics and, and distribute them. I mean, there is a basic, basic metric pipeline in place, but if you want to do use the autoscaler, then, then you need a metric, a metric server, which does not come by default. The last piece of the puzzle is that all of these metrics that we collected with Prometheus, of course, they are not compatible with what a metric service API expects. So we will need some sort of adapter to, to actually translate the metrics from one, from one uh, tool to the other. Okay, so these three things together, they should, should be able to, to help us scale, scale the pods. So let me show you this horizontal pod autoscaler first. So this is, again, is some YAML, so some definition that uh, we install in the cluster. Um, if, if, if it looks confusing, I think this is basically what it's saying. Scale my application, so pod info, from one to 10 replicas, and here are the metrics. In this particular case, we are basically saying, on average, I want to keep 100 active connections per, per Nginx. And the metric server is basically a component that you install in your cluster and basically just gives metrics and makes them available to the entire cluster. The way it's designed um, in Kubernetes is that we've got several ways to ingest them and to make them available. Uh, but for the sake of, uh, of today, the only things that you really want to remember is that what we have that doesn't actually works with metric server. So what people have developed is an adapter which you install in the cluster and then sort of works as a bridge between uh, the, the metrics that, that you collect with Prometheus and the metrics that Kubernetes is expected to read and make available to the cluster. Um, so the, the project is an official project from uh, through Kubernetes 6 and setting up the entire pipeline it is not, it is not easy. Um, that's why I usually uh, avoid that altogether and install something else called, called uh, KIDA, which is, which is a short name for Kubernetes event-driven autoscaling. So the way KIDA works is basically, it's, it's gonna replace some of these components um, and, and basically you don't need to install this metric server from Kubernetes. You don't need to install um, uh, an adapter basically Kida combines all of these components together. So it is a little bit easier to install and, and to operate. Um, that's, in, in a nutshell, it is the same thing, um, but the difference is that it's easily, because everything comes uh, bundled together, it is easier to install and operate. Now, without going too much details, because everything is integrated, then the lead time between collecting metrics and making them available to the autoscaler is also much shorter. So technically you get also better performance if you, if you care about scaling um, things. Um, yeah, and so, so how does this KIDA integrate with the horizontal portal to scaler? Well, it basically, it does not, it, it sort of does, but the reality is that they basically created their own horizontal portal to scaler. Uh, which is again, a lot of things to remember, but it looks pretty much the same. It just says, I want to scale my app from one to 20 replicas, and these are the metrics. So the same three blocks that you saw in, in, in the HPA, so in the horizontal pod autoscaler, are basically the same metrics and the same blocks that we see in the scaled object. With the difference is that this scale object is something that KIDA understands and KIDA only. So you're basically, it's a definition for, for KIDA. Okay, so it's time, it's time for the last part of the demo, then we actually see auto scaling, hopefully. So we have, this is the configuration that we have. We have an application, we have an ingress controller, we have a way to generate load, we have a way to collect metrics, and then there is a lot already, but we're gonna squeeze in one last component, which is Kida. Okay, and hopefully we're gonna see the metrics in Prometheus, the metrics in Locust, and then we're gonna see the scaling as well. Okay, so let's see if we can get this working. <laughs> um, so before, before I do anything, I need to, 
um, just delete this pod. So I'm going to reset the um, locust to the so the load generator, and I'm going to install Kida. So again, I'm going to use um, Helm, which is this package manager. So I'm going to install a lot of YAML files together in one go. And then once I've defined those, then the last part is to submit this um, scaled object. So a scaled object, like we, like, like we discussed, is basically a way to define um, where the metrics are collected, how many replicas do we need to increase, um, where is the deployment, and so on and so forth. So I can submit that to the class of kubectl apply for scaled object. OK. And then as soon as I do that, I can see that there is a new object in my cluster called scaled object, scaled object. Yeah, it's here. And then the funny thing is that this scaled object automatically created what we call an horizontal pod autoscaler. So basically this scaled object is just basically a wrapper around, um, around the HPA. That's, that's how it works. Now, the, you see an unknown here as a target you know, as soon as it, um, the the metrics are collected, we will start seeing zeros, one and zero. There we go. And then at this point, we are um, we are ready. Okay. So what's next? Um, we actually need to send some, some traffic and observe the scaling. So I'm gonna rearrange my. So first of all, I'm gonna check that I can I can visit this, which I cannot. Let me just uh, open. Okay, this should do the job. Okay, so I'm just going to rearrange my monitor a little bit so we can actually observe all of these metrics happening at the same time. One, two, and three. Okay. Yeah, hopefully it will, will work. Okay, so we'll start and go very aggressive. And let's see if I can get this one. And we'll see what happens. And this is the moment of the truth. Let's see, let's see, <laughs> let's see if it really works. So what, what am I looking at? So if I look at this graph is basically telling me that we are we are adding 20 users at a time. So every second, 20 more users are, uh, are added to the number of requests. Uh, in this graph, I'm looking at response time. So how long does it take for the request to come back? And in this graph, I'm, I'm looking at total requests per second. Now, I'm, I can see that Prometheus is already my, um, collecting the metrics and it's basically telling me that we are over 250 active connections per Nginx. So I'm expecting the autoscaler to kick in and create a um, new Nginx um, ingress controller any, any minute. So while I wait for it, the situation is getting way worse. So what I'm expecting next is that this is going to spike again, and then this is going to trigger the autoscaler. Now, if it does not, I think that will be really embarrassing. <laughs> there we go. Three more popped in. Um, so you can see that we have the scaling is actually is actually working. I'm so, <laughs> yeah, that, yes. <laughs> and um, if we wait a little bit more, there we go even more. So if we wait a little bit longer, then then the autoscaler will create pods until until we reach the maximum, which is uh, which is twenty replicas. Um, so a few notes on on this setup. Of course, we're just scaling the ingress controller but there is still a single application replying to all the requests. So it, it is not a fair um, a sort of, it's not something that you will see in, in production. In production, you will auto scale, not just the ingress controller, but the application itself. Uh, but for the sake of this demo, then it's nice. Um, it, it's basically enough to see, to see the ingress controllers um, being, being added um, in real time. Cool. So let me stop before my mini cube will crash. So you can see more and more pods are being uh, being added, and I'll just recap and show you. <clears throat> just recap on, on what we learned. So, <clears throat> what is this ingress? Uh, so I'll just do a quick recap on what we've done today. Uh, so this is the end of the demo. Um, what is this ingress in Kubernetes? Well, 
it's just old stuff repurposed with, with a different name. Um, so it's just the reverse proxy we used to use in the past and um, it's been called ingress and, and we can create more copies of it and that's how we scale it. We had a look at how to generate traffic with Locust. I think it's a quite nice tool uh, to just see and how your application behaves. And then we spent quite a lot of time actually discussing metrics, how to collect them, where they are exposed, and, and what's the life cycles of metrics. Sometimes we need adapters. So it is quite a sometimes confusing subject, but it's, it's also very important that you understand the flow of these metrics as they affect quite a lot of things, not just the scaling, but also reporting or, or any sort of um, thing that, that you, you want to, to act on. So for example, alerts as well. Um, so this is usually defined as the metrics pipeline. And then Kubernetes has got these sort of different layers of, of metrics pipelines. Some, some of it is the basics, uh, which are collected by the kubelet. So Kubernetes already collects some something like CPU and memory. But if you need more metrics like you know, serious level, production level, level stuff, then that, that basically requires more, uh, investing more in, in tooling and, and infrastructure. And I hope we understand, um, oh, there is a typo here, but I hope you all, <laughs> you all noticed that um, there is there are quite a lot of tools involved in, in getting this up and running. I mean, I showed you in, in half an hour how it works, but you saw like there are there is a tool for the auto scaling, a tool for metrics, a tool for generating them, and adapters and so on and so forth. And it just becomes so complex to put all of these things together. So it's not that Kubernetes is bulletproof. I mean, <laughs> most people say, "Oh, Kubernetes is going to solve that." Actually. Most of the time does not, and there are a lot of components that need to be integrated to get to get this um, this up and running. Yeah, um, I just want to close with a few links and a few things that you might be interested in if if auto scaling is is something that you do or you plan to do in the future in in Kubernetes. So this Kida is quite interesting because they also have a way to integrate with. Um, existing applications. So basically what they do is they let you intercept the traffic going to other applications and decide how to scale them based on the number of requests. So I think this is this this add-on for Kida has been on, on, on the beta pretty much forever, but it's now been basically promoted to, to production. And I think it's quite an interesting tool that um, you could use to, to actually scale, not just the Ingress controller, but basically any other sort of components based, based on number of requests. So I think this is worth checking out uh, from the official website. The other things that I sort of suggest you to have a look at, so we, Ingress controllers, I mean, I demo the Nginx, but the reality is that Kubernetes does not have a default Ingress controller. So generally what we recommend is just choosing the right Ingress controller um, that, um, that makes it for you. But how do you decide? So we put together like a, this list of um, Ingress controllers so you can compare the sort of the features and see which one is right for you. So I'm gonna send the link at the end uh, so you can check it out. And then uh, the last one is if you're interested in scaling, then you know what I've touched on today, it's the very tip of the iceberg. And the reason why I'm saying that is because all of these metrics need to be copied from one part to the other. And the more hops you have, then the more time it takes to propagate them. So all of these sort of uh, compromises, then I try to collate, collate them and, and having gone to, on these blogs. So you can basically just you know, sort of understand what are the consequences of using adapters? What if you go from, from a tool which is integrated and how is that going to affect my scaling when I add more nodes? So more service to my cluster. Um, and yeah, I think if you, are, if you are into that sort of stuff, you also have like a tool to actually help you decide what, what um, instance size should you use for for your cluster? So I think I'll uh, I'll share the links on the on the chat so you can you can have them, and that's it really. I hope you enjoyed. Um, that's all from me. <laughs>